Welcome back to Life of Birch. This is Birch, and today we're going over my top three favorite features of the Rebel 1100. Now, this bike is obviously loaded with tons of cool features, so it's pretty hard to narrow down my top three, but I think I did a pretty good job. Make sure to stick around until the end, though, because my number one favorite feature of this bike is actually something that lots of people hate about it. Perfect. All right, so let's just jump straight into it with the first of the top three favorite features. And this one, I actually didn't think I would use all that much. And the first time that I used it, I was hooked. And that's the cruise control. It's a super awesome feature to have when you're on the highway and you're doing 80 or whatever. Your forearm or your wrist gets a little bit sore. Set that thing in cruise control and you are good to go. I didn't think I'd use it at first because I like being in total control of the bike. And in my head, I'm like, well, what if I'm in cruise control and somebody gets in front of me and I can't slow it down? But it's really super easy. All you do is roll off the throttle or tap the brakes and cruise control comes right off but uh instead of talking about it let's kind of show you how it works all right turn the bike on so cruise control is over here and uh, all you got to do to turn it on is click that button and then you'll see over here when you click it you can see that button turn on and off right there. If it's lit up, obviously that means that it's on. And then when you're riding, I think you just have to be over 30 miles per hour or something like that. But all you do is just click down right there to set it. And then your cruise control set. You can take your hand all the way off and it's going to stay at that speed. If you want to increase the speed, you can click up or you can click down to decrease the speed. And while it's in cruise control, it'll show the miles per hour that it's set at. So it'll show exactly, you know, it's set at 65, it's set at 64. So each click is a one mile per hour difference. And then, like I said, if you wanna turn the cruise control off, you either roll off the throttle or you tap either the front brake or the rear brake, cruise control will come right off. And then if you wanna resume at the same speed, you just click up and it'll automatically start back at the speed that you left off at. And then of course, if you don't want cruise control on anymore, you just tap that and you'll see the light turn off and cruise controls off. So as you can see, super easy to use, really convenient to have. Like I said, I didn't think I would use it all that much, but honestly, anytime I'm on the highway for longer than 15 or 20 minutes, I end up using it because if I can just have it set and not have to have my wrist cocked back the entire time and kind of save myself that way, then why wouldn't I do it? All right, so we're gonna stay on the bike to talk about the second feature that I love about it, and that is all of the different riding modes. So it's super cool because you can bring it around and see that it has the standard mode, rain mode, user mode, and sport mode. Super, super convenient for controlling the power, traction, and engine braking of the bike. And then on the DCT, you'll even see a fourth one right there that controls how long it stays in gear. Now, this is a game changer for me because I've never had a throttle by wire bike where you can control that. So it's super nice to be able to say, you know, if I'm on the back roads or the highway, I'll leave it in sport mode and have that power at my fingertips. But then when I'm going around town, I can throw it into standard mode so that it's not quite as twitchy on the throttle. And then you can even set the user mode to exactly how you want it. So you can change how much power, traction control, engine braking, and for the DCT, the shift points, and set that user mode to exactly how you want it. So for me personally, I've already set the user mode. I've been playing around with it a little bit, but I set the user mode to full power, lowest traction, and lowest engine braking. So that way I have the full power at my disposal when I'm going through stop and go traffic or around town, but these two are as low as possible. So that way it's not quite as twitchy. And I found that that kind of works best for me when I'm just going around town, but I've heard other people setting theirs to different whatever. So it's really nice because you can set the bike to exactly how you want it to be. And now for the third and final, but actually my favorite feature of the bike, we're going to have to get off of it to show it to you. And this is the one that I said that actually lots of people hate about the bike, but it's my favorite. And that is the seat. Now for me, I don't mean necessarily just the seat itself as far as the comfort goes, although I do think it's more comfortable than people let on, but I'm talking about all the features that come with the seat. Now what do I mean? Let's turn the bike off, then you push the key in, turn it and you'll hear it pop and that's how you take the seat off. So once it pops, you just lift it right off, the seat comes up and not only is it that easy to take the seat off, whereas with the 500 it had the two little Allen bolts that you had to undo to even get to under the seat, but the 1100 even has storage under here. I want to say it's one liter of storage. I don't know what that is in American units, <laughs> but you know, it's half of a two liter of soda if that means anything. So you got plenty of storage. I've been able to fit a rise up breakfast burrito under here, so that's really all I care about. You'll see it even has the strap right here with the uh, stock toolkit, and then even cooler right here it has a charging port so this pops right off 
and then it's a USB-C connection right here. So anything that you can charge with a USB-C can be charged with this. So for my iPhone, I'm actually headed today to get a USB-C to lightning adapter so I can charge my phone under here when I'm riding if I need to. Or you could even, you know, wire something going from here all the way up to the handlebars if you wanted to for an easy way to charge your phone at the mount. And then you come back down here and you'll notice that this tray actually just pops right out with a couple of rivets and then you still have your battery under there so it's nice and easy to get to. Now, if that's not enough, the coolest feature of this seat for me actually is these hooks right here. So these actually are helmet locks so that when you get off the bike, you can lock your helmet in place and nobody can take it. So let me grab my helmet and my spare helmet and we'll show you what it looks like with both of them hooked up there. All right, so I figured it was best to go hands-free for this part to show you exactly how the helmet attaches there. So essentially you have these two hooks right here that your metal D-ring closure of your helmet just slips right over. You have one side for yours, one side for a passenger. If Honda ever releases the passenger seat to the US market, <coughs> Honda. So all you do is slip the D-ring over each of these and it has like a little lip on it too so there's no way it can slide out. So uh, let's kind of show you how it goes on. I've only ever done just my helmet so I have a passenger helmet I'm going to try to put on at the same time to see how easy it is but uh, I'm assuming it'll be just as easy as this. So let's see what it looks like. All right so we'll do my helmet on the left side. We're just going to slip that D-ring over the left side hook. Just stick it in there pops right on and then let's uh try the passenger helmet all right so we come around to this side slip it right over that hook let's see if the seat will pop on boom seat locks in place and you got two helmets that are nice and locked on there and they're not going anywhere man and i gotta say that was actually a lot easier than i thought it was going to be the first time that i put just my helmet on it was a little bit tricky because of the little lip that makes it so you can't pull the helmet out but uh honestly getting a second one on there was pretty easy oh actually oh tight. <laughs> I don't want to cry. Looks like the suspension actually scratched my helmet, so that kind of sucks. Or maybe it's just the rubberized coating. Never mind. Looks like it's coming off. Ignore me. But also, still be careful of it, I guess. But uh, yeah, so both of them are on there nice and secure. Not getting either of them off there, even if you wanted to. Well, I mean, unless you have the key, but... Nobody can steal those, then you're free to go in the store, go into the restaurant, whatever, and not worry about carrying your helmet around. If you want to get it back, again, you just push the key in, turn, the seat pops up, lift the seat up, and then they're both free to just take it off the uh, off the hook. So there you have it, my top three favorite features of the Honda Rebel 1100, the number one of which being the dual built-in helmet lock, which is a lifesaver. Be sure to let me know what you thought in the comments. If you have one of these bikes, let me know what your top three favorite features are. I know it has a ton of features, so maybe your favorite one is the standard ABS. Maybe your favorite feature is the standard LED lights. There's a number of things that it could be. These bikes are awesome, so let me know what your favorite features are in the comments. If you haven't subscribed, already make sure to smash that subscribe button we just passed 10,000 subscribers which is nuts to me so thank you everyone who has subscribed if you haven't already make sure you get on that make sure to give the video a big old like if you liked it so the algorithm knows that i'm doing something right and of course we'll catch you on the next one peace psych i'm back to remind you to watch some of my other videos youtube should be recommending two of them on this end screen right now if you like this one i'm sure you'll like those as well plus youtube likes videos to be at least eight minutes long i just edited this one and it was seven minutes and 54 seconds so i'm kind of buying time right now uh anyway love you guys see ya